Last time on MasterChef, Chrissy took control of the competition, which quickly turned foul. There are birds all over the place. She targeted Luca, Jordan, You're in big trouble. and Natasha. You got me, Chrissy. Chrissy hit a bullseye. That's disgusting. As Jordan, please say goodbye, became the latest casualty in the MasterChef kitchen. I wanted to do my mom proud, and I think I did my mom proud. Tonight, a team challenge elevates the contestants to new heights. Welcome to the top of Los Angeles. At one of the country's finest restaurants. Keep it up, guys. But it isn't long before the meltdowns begin. Freeze! There's nothing coming out! Now it's burning. If you put cold water in the steamer, what happens? Start again! The whole round, got a show. Of course, the whole table! And a pressure test. It's time to take your apron off. Sends home another top contender. Final six home cooks are in downtown Los Angeles, where their culinary skills will be put to the ultimate test in tonight's team challenge. It looks like we are in a movie. The three judges coming out from the helicopter, all the wind. Whatever happening today is a huge deal. Welcome, everybody, to the top of Los Angeles. All right, guys, top six. I see five. Where's Chrissy? She's on the roof, but she couldn't make it up here. She's what? She's terrified of heights. Serious? I'm deathly afraid of heights. And I realize how high up I am. I'm like, I'm going to pass out up here, and I'm probably going to die. Well, MasterChef waits for nobody. As you can probably guess, we didn't just bring you here for the view. Directly beneath our feet sits WP24. It's a stunning fine dining restaurant with a very modern take on Chinese cuisine. That's where you're going to face one of the most grueling challenges we do in this entire competition, the restaurant takeover. Natasha and Brie, since you had the winning dishes from the last challenge, you will be the captains in this team challenge. Please step forward. The last challenge that Brie and I went up against each other as team captains, I won. So hopefully I can keep that streak running. Natasha, since you had the best dish, you get to pick first. I need a co-captain. And Jesse puts out beautiful plates, and she's got finesse, so Jesse. Wow. I obviously want to be on Natasha's team. Didn't work out so well with Brie being the captain last time. Can't trust a vegetarian because she can't eat the food that's being sent out. Brie, captain of the blue team, we still have. Chrissy downstairs, don't forget about Chrissy. James and Luca. I'm choosing this person because I know they'll be comfortable with the cuisine we're working with today. James. Wow. Good choice. Natasha, this next pick, you're picking for both teams, so you have a big advantage here. I would like someone who has been around the restaurant business before and still in it. So Luca is going to be my pick. So that means, by default, Chrissy is in the blue team. Chrissy has a record of zero wins in team challenges, which is impressive in the worst way possible. Are you guys ready? Absolutely, yes, chef. chef. Let's get it on. Chrissy, you OK, darling? We missed you up there. Let's, uh, let's head back down. Uh, I didn't know you were scared of heights. Guys, come down, please. I want to introduce you to a very special man, executive chef. John Lechleitner. So John is going to give you the most amazing demonstration, and then you are going to replicate those dishes. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Chef. Let's head over to the walk. Our home cooks will now have to learn the four top-selling signature dishes of WP24. Appetizers, steamed scallop shrimp shumai, and crisp lettuce cups with tempura sweet main lobster, along with entrees, Singapore-style chili prawns, and stir-fried Wagyu beef with a chili garlic and sweet bean sauce. This is going to be for the shumai. It's a oyster sauce, Shaoxiang stock, slurry, salt, sugar. Get it going. Drizzle in your egg. Let the egg cook all the way through. Throw in your crab. I got to cook four-star Chinese food, and I hate Asian food, and I've never cooked it before. Put your scallop on top, and then you go around, and you start pinching around, and then put the whole plate just right in the steamer like that. Seven minutes in the steamer. 
based on feedback from the diners and performance in the kitchen, the judges will decide the winning team. So next we have the lobster. Take your lobster, drop them in one at a time. The losing team will face the dreaded pressure test. A little bit of cilantro. So John, entrees, please. Uh, chili prawns. Chili prawns. Everything that is being produced tonight is being produced on a walk. And getting the technique down of working on a walk, that takes years of practice. You can't overcook your shrimp. I'm going slow so I can show you guys, but ideally you want to go faster. That man is a magician. I didn't even know you could cook that fast, and it looked that good. There's that. One more. Stir fry beef. You have uh, Chinese flat chives, budding chives, snap peas, snow peas. There's like 37 ingredients into it. It's quick. Start to finish, two and a half minutes, and I was taking my time. It's a ton of info to take in at once. It's going to be intense. OK, guys, each team will have to serve 22 regular customers of this fantastic restaurant. And there's one more very important part of this challenge. I will be expediting. There's no way on earth that I am leaving that to any of you. Chef Ramsey is going to be expediting, which already freaks me out. I just hope we don't lose our focus while he's screaming at us. One hour of prep, and you've got two hours of dinner service. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. Your time starts now. Off you go, guys. OK, guys, OK, this is what I think we should do. The home cooks must get organized quickly to prep for these highly complex dishes. You're comfortable with frying the lobster off? I feel 100% OK with that. Okay, I can do this, you mind? Then I'll be plating everything, putting it out in the window. Come on, let's do this. For the appetizers, Captain Natasha has assigned Jesse to the lobster lettuce cups and Luca to the scalloped shrimp shumai, while she will handle all the final plating. So for both the appetizers and the entrees, I'm going to be on the end at plating, finishing all the garnishes. Like Captain Natasha, Captain Bree will be overseeing the final dishes and has assigned Chrissy to the lobster lettuce cups and James to the shumai. This is a nightmare scenario. I've got a vegetarian and a girl who won't eat Asian food. How the hell am I supposed to prepare modern Asian cuisine with those two? Bree, you got to cut a little faster than that, honey. OK. Good, good, good. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. This is as hard as it gets. They're going to cook Asian food in walks. I wouldn't know how to cook in a walk. And don't forget, it's three versus three. I mean, this isn't like the wedding where it was double that amount. This no. is really small kitchen crew. Team effort is crucial. The timing is paramount. They have to taste what they're cooking and be quick. As night falls, WP24 is open for business. And the pressure is on for our home cooks. Just under 10 minutes until our first tables sit down and order. Yes, chef. Let's go, guys. You know, the prep part was pretty easy, but steaming these guys and having a sauce ready for them right away is not the easy part. All right, James. Here we go, baby. First table, blue team. Two colors table, 50. One, two, my one lobster. Yes, chef. Thank you. This is it. OK, on order, red team. Yes, chef. Two covers table, 52. One, two, my one lobster. Yes, chef. Thank you. Let's go, guys. Is that steamer on full? Yes, it is. It should be. No, it's not. Oh, wow, now it's on full. Chrissy, yes. if the steamer's not steaming, slow down on the salad. By the time, in seven minutes' time, what's going to happen to them? They're going to get soft. Yeah, we're like eating a soggy blanket. OK. Start again. OK. Where's the lobster? Right here, chef. Lovely. Very nice. Service, please. Pick up. Chef, order up. Service, please. Red team, 33. When I think about how hectic it can be in the master chef kitchen, now that I'm in a real kitchen, this is crazy. This is insane. Two sumai, two lobster blue team. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Nice, 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 nice. We're soaring. Chrissy's moving quickly. Bree is garnishing, dressing, and calling out orders like a mad woman. One shumai, one lobster, followed by one shumai, three lobsters. Shumai is coming off my station perfectly. That's brilliant. Chrissy, yes, keep chef. it going. Yes, chef. Keep it going. Service, please. While the blue team is rapidly sending out their appetizers, the red team is falling behind as Luca is struggling with the steaming of the shumai. We're dragging on the appetizer a little sure. bit. We need to pick up the speed. Come on, Luca. I have no idea what's going on. This is supposed to be put the dumplings in the steamer. The steamer cooks them for you. I have no idea what I'm doing. Luca! 
Yes, Chef. Come on, guys. In the dining room, things are about to go from bad to worse for the red team as Joe is summoned by a very angry customer. What, what happened? I have a raw scallop shumai. A raw scallop shumai. Oh my god, yeah. completely raw. Guys, red team, I got freaking completely raw. You guys gotta steam these things. Red team, come here. What is that? Not done, raw. What is going on? Chef, we, we need to turn it up more. Minutes. They were there for seven minutes. Is the steamer up? Yes, yeah, Chef. Is there any water at the bottom? Yes, yeah, Chef, just put it in. You put it in? Yes, yeah, Chef. Cold water or hot water? I think it was cold. So if you put cold water in, if you put cold water in the steamer, what happens? It's gonna bring down the temperature. There you go, guys. This is a disaster. At this point, I'm just wondering how are we gonna come back from this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Our top six home cooks have taken over the upscale modern Asian restaurant, WP24. Tonight's diners have a choice of two appetizers, scalloped shrimp shumai or crispy lobster rolls. The blue team is off to a great start. What do you think so far? Oh my god, the shumai is unbelievable. Really? While the red team continues to have problems with Luca's shumai. It's embarrassing that we've been putting these plates out, but I'm not willing to give up, and I know that we can fix this. Red team captain Natasha decides it's time to take over from Luca on the shumai appetizer. Come on, guys. Let's, let's focus and regroup here, OK? Chef, order up. Nice. The winner of this challenge will be decided by the judges based on team performance in the kitchen and feedback from the customers. Last two tables. Let's go. Woo! Get fired up, Blue! Yes, there you go, Chef. Service up. Nice. Blue team, really well done, the appetizers. Thank you, if you Chef. If you do that for the entrees, it's a home run. Yes, Chef. Thank you, Thank Chef. You, chef. Time, guys. Woo! Chef, order up. Yes, excellent. Chef. Excellent. Thank table 43. Thank you. Right, red team, that was a bad start. We can pull it back to the entree. Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. OK? We really messed up the appetizer. So right now, we just need to keep on going and make sure that the main course will be perfect. On order, red team. Three beef, one prawns, yes? Yes, Chef. Good. There we go. There we go. For the entrees, red team captain Natasha will continue to plate and has assigned Luca to the Wagyu beef stir fry and Jesse to the Singapore style prawns. Two beef, two prawns. Yes, Chef. On the blue team, Captain Bree will plate and has assigned James to the beef and Chrissy to the prawns. I'm looking at the notes that I have taken, but I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, I I'm lost. Um, wait, should I? Oh, you know what? I can't remember what the plate's supposed to look like. Chrissy, does that look right to you? Um, it doesn't look right to me. And I'm like, I don't know what I did wrong. You put too yeah, much in all at once. Keep it moving. Chrissy is handling that walk with the finesse of 27 drunk bulls in a very, very small china shop. Order up, chef. Yeah. No, is everything OK, chef? No, it's not OK. No, it's not. Come around. Chrissy, Chrissy. James, come here. The shrimp are cold, and the shrimp are raw. Who's cooking the shrimp? Chrissy. You can see they're raw, right? Yes, yeah, Chef. Yes, yeah, Chef. Start again. Yes, yeah, Chef. The whole round. Got it, Chef. Yes. What, what do you mean, the whole round? What, what do you think I'm going to do? No, we're not going to do Send half the table? Of course, the whole table. While the blue team struggles with their entrees, the red team has finally started to find their groove. Chef, order up and dishes are flying out of the kitchen. Natasha, great start, yes? Yes, Chef. Keep it going. Thank Let's you. Go. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Our service for entrees is just flying by. We have plates going left, right, left, right. Jess and Luca are totally rocking those walks. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. We got this. Die, 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 die. I had the red team's prawns. The spiciness was exactly what I was looking for. It actually wowed my expectation. Let's go, let's go, guys, let's go. While the red team is finally seeing some success, the blue team is falling even further behind. All right, how long is it going to take you to get those prawns ready? I don't know. I, 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 hey, I, hey, 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 come on. 
Bring it back. Chrissy, what's wrong? I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I am literally ruining everything for this team. And I'm not doing it on purpose. Is this, is this on? Look, it's not on. So oh I'm going to crank up the heat. There you go. This isn't my thing. Just you might as well send me home now. While the blue team struggles in the kitchen, Joe is busy fielding angry complaints from the diners. It's been at least an hour since we've eaten anything. And I, and I apologize. I know it doesn't help, and I know it's late. I know you've been waiting a long time. I'm going to go back and check on them again, and I do apologize. Everything's burned on this clock. I got to start over. Christy, Christy. I, I got some blue team tables who are ready to walk. They've been waiting an hour and a half for entrees. I'm disgusted with the performance of our team right now. I don't know what to do. I can't do the job of a leader and do the job of the line cook at the same time. Bree needs to step in and save this. Bree! Blue team customers are starting to walk out. They're starting to walk out. OK, I don't know what's going on, but there's nothing coming out. Dinner service is in full swing at the prestigious WP24 restaurant in downtown LA. While the red team is quickly getting entrees out to diners, the blue team is at a standstill as Chrissy struggles with the Singapore style chili prawns. Joe's dying in the dining room. Customers are complaining. We have customers that are leaving, guys, walking out. What am I doing? Please tell me what I'm doing with it. This is the complete opposite of how it was going with the appetizers. The appetizers were absolutely perfect, and the entree round is a disaster. Now, now it's burning. I'm literally broken at this point, and I don't know what else to do. You got to keep that flame up. Flame up, flame up. It has been a complete relief to see Graham step in. So get it hot, and then start working it. There you go. Three beans, three prawns, how long? I got two minutes. Okay, you'll be done in two minutes. Good. Get your sauce right, and you're gonna warm it up. You finish your prawns in there. As bad as I'm feeling, there's people out in that dining room that want their food, and I've got to suck it up. Come on, Chrissy, fight back. I, I got it. I got it. Here, babe, behind you. With Graham's help, the blue team is finally getting entrees out to the customers, and Joe checks in to see how they rate the dishes. So, sir, what did you think of the red team's entree? Well, I had the chili prawns. The chili prawns. And the flavor was unbelievable. Wow. I had the blue team's prawn, and it was, it was chewy. It was, it was not very good tasting. No way, we're catching up. We're catching up. Yes, we are. We're Keep fine. up the pace, guys. We're doing OK. I had the blue dish from the red team. It was fabulous. I think it had great flavor. It had a good pop. I had the blue team's Wagyu beef. I've eaten at a bunch of different uh, high-quality Asian restaurants around the country, and this one, by far, right up there. Last two tables, guys. Last two tables. Pick it up. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. How far are you from being yeah. done? You ready? All right, we're ready. Order up. Very nice. Putting up the last plate, it's amazing. We did a good job. Good job. You're great. I'm extremely proud of my team because we were able to work together and overcome the fact that we didn't have such a good start. Thank God you worked as a team for the entree. Great job. Blue team, red team have finished. Two beefs, two prawns. Chrissy, yes? Yes, chef. I definitely have a much bigger appreciation for anybody who cooks at this level. This was intense. Come on, guys. Last table. Come on. Come on, guys. OK, Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy. I need prawns right now. Here you go, Bray. Two prawns behind you. There you go, chef. Service 41, 42, please, yes? Chrissy, you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Chrissy, James, Bree, well done. You, Look at me, that was a slow finish. Yeah. It's about the flavor, OK? With dinner service completed, the diners complete their comment cards. The winner of tonight's challenge will be decided by the judges based on this feedback and the team's overall performance in the kitchen. The losing team will face a pressure test. I, I was, like, beating myself up big time. Yeah. Like, I really was. I know it's frustrating, but, like, if we really think about it, three home cooks with no experience working in a professional kitchen yeah. come Just in and bang a out a dinner night. service? Although our food was slower getting out, I'm really hoping that the quality of our food is better because I know that the red team had more dishes sent back. 
You know, maybe they can overlook the fact that the appetizers didn't come out the way that they should have. Both teams had ups and downs. The stupid dumplings. Overcooked, raw, cold inside. Even if we did a great main course service, I don't have any excuses to how bad I perform in my appetizers. Red team, blue team, seriously, all of you should be incredibly proud of what you accomplished tonight. You ran the kitchen of one of the best restaurants in this country. There's something that I think all of you deserve. Come on. Now, we listened to all the diners' feedback. We watched every dish leave the hot plate. We dissected everything you cooked, and we will decide which team is heading to the dreaded pressure test. And that team is... going to be decided... overnight. We've got some serious thinking to do. Good night. The judges are not going to tell us tonight. Now is the time to relax. I think we did an amazing job. But tomorrow is another day. Anybody can go home at this point. The final six contestants return to the MasterChef kitchen to find out who won yesterday's restaurant takeover challenge and to discover who will face tonight's dreaded pressure test. The last supper table. I look at it this way. Entrees, we were 10 minutes behind. Apps, they were 10 minutes behind. At the end, I still think we did a good job. The only problem was those dumplings. The dumplings were just like a hiccup. I don't want to go in a pressure test with Jesse and Natasha. I don't even want to think about it because the risk to be eliminated right now is too high. Last night, you ran the kitchen of one of the finest restaurants in the entire country. You guys each had your ups and downs. But overall, the three of us were extremely proud of what you were able to accomplish. But there has to be a winning team, and as always, a losing team. We watched you cook. We spoke to all of the customers, and we tasted everything you made. One team will head up into the gallery and straight in to the top five of this competition. The other team will shortly face one of the most dreaded pressure tests so far. The winning team... Congratulations. Red team. We always tell you it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And you finish strong. Head up to the gallery. Well done. I don't want to be in another pressure test. I've been in every pressure test, and I'm sick of it. Well done. Oh, wow. Let's switch these out. So, blue team, you know what this means. One of you will be walking out of those doors when this pressure test is over. Bree, based on yesterday's performance, who, out of the three of you, including yourself, should be safe from elimination? Looking back into what was done in the kitchen, the attitudes of my teammates, I would choose myself. You think that you would perform the best? Yes. Chrissy, what do you think about that decision? She knows that that's Bree, fortunately for you, you do not have to make such a difficult decision. Because tonight, all three of you will be cooking in the pressure test. Are you three ready to find out what you have to cook in order to stay in this competition? Yes. It's one of the most common menu items across America. It's a dish that will test your knife skills your prep work, 
your sauce work, and especially your frying technique. I grew up eating this along with most of America. Calamari. A plate of fried calamari with flavorful marinara sauce. We want the most perfectly crisp, perfectly seasoned calamari. We want a marinara sauce that perfectly complements the calamari. Have you had calamari? Yes. Love it. Grow up on it. All of you are going to have to start with six whole, stunning squid. You'll have to clean and prepare yourselves. Head to your stations. On your stations, you all have identical ingredients. Six fresh squid, AP flour, cornmeal, breadcrumbs, eggs, buttermilk, tomatoes, garlic, lemon, parsley, and seasoning. You have to know exactly what you're doing. And during the preparation, you have to navigate that ink sack very carefully as not to puncture it and spoil that calamari. It may look like an easy plate, but let me tell you, this is a very difficult challenge. Your 45 minutes starts now. Calamari, something that seems super basic, but technically difficult to master. What makes it so great? What are the steps? First and foremost important, the preparation. So you take out that spine at the back mm -hmm. that you pull out, take off the tentacles, remove the skin, mm -hmm. and then fingers in and start removing out all the guts. So if you gently grab a quill from the calamari, you can remove the whole interior in one shot. It gets everything out. If you start destroying it, then you're in trouble. Right, absolutely. It's a tough one, this one. Bad. I quite like it once it's been cleaned, sliced, and then into some form of milk or buttermilk to tenderize it in the batter. Right, it also helps to keep that batter on it. Mm -hmm. What would you dredge them in, Brett? I would make a, a really seasoned flour with maybe some of the Italian seasoning, a lot of salt and pepper, just get them dusted in that, and then you get them into oil that's at about 350. The oil temperature is the single biggest point of jeopardy in this competition. The idea is to fry a little bit at a time so the oil doesn't change temperature too much, they never get soggy, let them get crisp, and then you can gather together a portion. It's very technical. So marinara, you're gonna know this. So marinara is classic. Extra virgin olive oil, garlic cloves, mm -hmm. whole plum tomatoes, break them up with my hands, Italian spices, that's it. It's the acidity that really juxtaposes the sweetness mm -hmm. of the fried yep. calamari. I've already achieved one dream, and that was becoming top six. Now top five's the next, so I'm gonna push and make the best possible calamari I can. I think that James has a real leg up over the other two. I mean, he's done it before, he's cleaned the squid. That's a big part of this challenge. Gotta okay, be careful. My money's on Brie. She's smart, she's very clever, she thinks a lot. So I'm hoping tonight she shines. But I think Chrissy, she's gonna be able to nail it. Marinara sauce, it's like her favorite thing in the world. So she has to find a way to get in the zone, get that calamari clean. The only problem is she's cooking angry. She is pissed. How the do you get this out? I have no idea. This is painful. Do what should do what should do? I don't know. Can you shut the f up up there? I might not be an expert at breaking down squid, but damn it, I'm going to try. Please go home. Go f yourself, Luca. I love you, too. Whoops. Jeez. Keep it up. That's messed up. In this pressure test, Bree, James, and Chrissy have just 45 minutes to make a perfect portion of fried calamari and marinara sauce from fresh squid they must butcher and clean themselves. Gross. Sorry, Bree. You got it. Ooh, damn, you got the ink sack on that. Just under 20 minutes to go. Right, Brie, are you confident? Definitely, Chef. I have to be confident. You're a vegetarian, and the big question for me is, are you tasting it tonight? I taste my flour before I season it. So you're going to eat the flour? Yes. And you're not going to taste the squid? Correct. Right. Who's going home tonight? Uh, Chrissy. Whatever. Good luck. 
I want to stay in this competition more than anything. I have a fire that no one else has because this is my second chance and I can't let the judges down. Hi, Chrissy. You seem like you're frustrated or cooking angry. Mm -hmm. And now you've got these three 10 feet above you watching your every move, mm -hmm. and they want you out. They're scared of me. That's why they want me to leave. I've dominated every Luke, are you scared? Every pressure test. Yeah, I'm not scared of Chrissy at all. No. Natasha, who's going home today? They all point to you. Mm -hmm. I just may go home, and they might get their wish. But <coughs> if I don't, they better know that I'm coming for them, and I'm coming for them hard. I know they only hate me because they fear me, but they're too stubborn to admit it. Because you can kick me, you can stop me, you can beat me with a bat. I'm gonna keep getting up, and I'm gonna win this whole competition. You've got five minutes to go. Speed up, guys, come on. What is she doing? Why would you put lemon in that marinara sauce? I thought this challenge was difficult, but attainable. Sure. From what I'm seeing now, this may have been more difficult than we thought. The James's are completely bready, overwhelming. How's that sauce looking? There's no seasoning in there. You can't ignore the marinara on this dish. Yeah, absolutely. Chrissy looks slightly disappointed, and she's not clean the squid properly. However, I like the way that she sliced it nice and thinly, so she's going for an ultra crisp squid. She may pull this off again. I don't want to see her in the top five. My big worry right now is Bree's pan is about to explode in fire. That burnt oil is going to impart a horrible yeah. flavor into each piece. She's really hard, way too hot. They're not cooking inside. She's going to get burned if she doesn't be careful. You're screaming. 90 seconds to go, come on. Taste everything, guys. Think smartly and do not underestimate the power of your sauce. Come on, guys. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Finishing touches. Season everything. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Well done. Please bring your calamari down to the front bench. Thank you. I've struggled with this challenge, but, you know, in the end, I came back and turned it around. So I'm feeling good. Brie, let's start with you. Visually, they're very thick, those rings. How do I know they're cooked? I cut one open and tested it. Did you eat it? No, chef. How did you test it? I open it up and see what the consistency was and make sure it looked like it was cooked. Yours look heavily coated in flour. It's all clumped together where yeah. you haven't dusted them down properly. OK. Normally, when you have excess flour that mm. hits the fryer, it burns instantly. And so you can just, if you just smell that plate, OK, it smells slightly burnt, even though it's not burnt. So you've got that sort of perfume burn smell. OK. I wish you could have tasted them because you would have put less flour on there. I want the calamari to be the hero, okay. not what you dredge them in. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. All right. That one that I just tried was definitely undercooked. Let's take a look. I mean, you can see that the breading is fried, right. but this inside is complete squid tartare. So, thanks. OK, tell me about your marinara. So my marinara was garlic, tomatoes, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and lemon juice. Why do you put lemon juice in tomato sauce? Because in this particular dish, it was complimenting seafood. Brie, you're a smart girl. That's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Tomatoes are inherently so acidic that adding acidity, I mean, it's just unheard of. OK. Chrissy. So visually, I mean, to me, it looks like a plate of onion rings. 
Marinara sauce, how have you made that? Just uh, tomatoes, I crushed them up with my heat and olive oil, garlic, red pepper flakes, and uh, just some fresh parsley in there. Mm -hmm. How many times did you egg wash this? Just once. Can you see what I'm saying? It's just like this sponge texture. How did you cook them? Um, I just, I fried them. I had the, the oil was way too hot, so I brought it down a little bit. How did you cool down oil fast? Add cold oil. Are you done? Absolutely not. So how do you think that's going to keep you in the competition? Because I didn't put lemon juice in my marinara and it's not raw. Damn. Tell me about the marinara. I just crush up my tomatoes. I usually put fresh basil, a little bit of olive oil, pepper. Garlic? In. Yeah, I put like uh, three cloves in. You know, your marinara is garlicky, it's rich. Calamari is sweet, it's cooked through. The batter is a little like fried, like funnel cake, like fried dough on a street fair. Chrissy, could you imagine going home on fried calamari, you? What are they going to say? They'll probably laugh at me and break my balls forever. It might not be that funny, because you could have just walked away from being very close to winning a quarter of a million dollars. Yep. I'm a little worried about my marinara. I kind of forgot about it. So I'm hoping they don't notice that. But they will. James. Hello. So they're all pretty much uniform in size. Feeling them, you can tell right now that they are cooked just the way you want them. What about your frying technique? I was kind of thinking that instead of leaving it in for over a minute, if they were sliced thinner and the batter wasn't as super, super heavy, mm -hmm. everything would get done at the same time. All right, how about the sauce? It smells like canned tomato juice, you know, like you're on an airplane. Yeah, that tastes like the tin can. I thought you were like the sauce guy. Uh, apparently not. It's too bad. James, visually, it's the perfect size. It really is the perfect size. I love it. I love the precision of the way you're working so thinly. What have you done to the sauce? Uh, it's just garlic, crushed red pepper, and sea salt with the tomatoes. It's got a very funny aftertaste. I don't know what it is. No olive oil in there? Uh, no olive oil. No olive oil at all in the tomato no sauce? No olive oil in marinara. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that horrible taste. You need that olive oil. Yeah. And. You know, I think it's... I was expecting better. Yeah, I'm just disappointed. Way too close to call, and you just made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. So maybe all three of us should go home. That would be nice. This is too close to call, and you just made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. So maybe all three of us should go home. We need some time. If I go home on Calamari, I will be the laughing stock of the neighborhood. My credibility as an Italian, ruined. It's a very difficult uh, challenge, this one. Very tough. James I was disappointed with. I'm surprised by Chrissy. Chrissy, you believe yeah. that? Brie as well. She was scared. I've never seen her slightly this petrified. I like my marinara. It's hard. Very, very difficult. James, please step forward. Joe, Graham, and myself felt that your calamari was the best performance of this evening. Please take your apron off. Make your way up to the gallery. You're now in the top five of MasterChef. James is safe. Now, I'm not even religious, but I'm praying to God that Christy goes home. Chrissy. I ask you to join us. Bree, Christy, one of you will be leaving MasterChef tonight. One of you will be entering the top five of this competition. If I lose to a vegetarian, I will literally go home and give up cooking. Bree, tonight, this calamari pressure test got the better of you. You know that. Yes, Chef. Could you cope with leaving this competition twice? Probably would never forgive myself for it. Chrissy, please step forward. You have come so far, but it's time.
take your apron off and head on upstairs to the gallery. You are safe. Oh, man. Bree, you know what this means. You are leaving the competition once more. I've never known a tenacious vegetarian to cook meat the way you do. You are going places, let me tell you. Gordon wanted to bring you back. He was right. You have a big heart, and I think you have a big future in whatever you want to do. You should be very proud, because we are. Follow that dream. Get yourself into a kitchen. Come here, you. Oh. Amazing job. Now, <laughs> look, who is going to win MasterChef? I'm still confident it's going to be James. James. And if there's any parting advice you could give to Chrissy now, what would it be? Be nice, please. Try to be nice. <laughs> Well done. Thanks. Get out of here. Please put your apron on your bench. Hi, guys. Ciao, Bri. Bye, Bri. Coming back into this competition was everything to me. Please welcome back, Bri. I've never been given a second chance before in my life. Even though I was only here for a short time, I learned so much. It's delicious. Good job. You really nailed it. Well done, Bri. Thank you. And I will take every single thing I've ever learned from the judges because they are the three greatest teachers I have ever had. Next time on Master Chef, the judges switch places with some very <laughs> special guests. Our sons. As the heirs to the Master Chef throne. I want some ketchup. Peanut butter. Take charge of the mystery box. Do you have a boyfriend? I do have a boyfriend. That. And then, it's a showdown for a spot in the final four. What's the matter with you? I'm in big trouble. And a MasterChef moment you don't want to miss. Chrissy. One potato, two potato.